My name's uh, Roy Lee Kilroy. Uh, I grew up in East L.A., Boyle Heights, and uh, in a neighborhood named uh, called White Fence. It's a, a radio, but it's a neighborhood, you know. And I became a member of the White Fence gang. Little did I know at that time that I'd spend the next 40 years living a very violent life. I'm not here to impress you with my past. I'm here to tell you there's a different way. My uncles, my role models used to tell me, go outside and play. Little boys should be seen and not heard. So I used to go outside and play and I go to the backyard and I, I used to beat them for their weed and, and, and start drinking their, their beer. So that's how I started getting high. And uh, before I knew it, I was in the mix, you know, in the neighborhood. Then I could have went another path, but it was very, I thought it was very exciting at the time. I joined the neighborhood gang and I was involved in gang fights. Matter of fact, our neighborhood was the first drive, drive by that happened, but it's not like they do it now. They just shoot anybody. It didn't happen that way in, when I grew up. If you had a mission to do, you would get that person and not just go and shoot anybody. I grew up in the neighborhood. I started gang banging. Uh, went to YA, Whittier, Preston. Then I, as an adult, I started going to the prisons, California State Prisons. See, when we were growing up, they told us, nobody comes down to White Fence. We don't like nobody. Don't let nobody in. So we used to go to dances, not to dance with the girls, but to fight with the guys, to fight with the, the vatos, you know? So we fought with flats, Primera flats, uh, First Flats, Fourth Flats, uh, the Brooklyn Flips, out of Flats, uh, Oyo Mara, uh, uh, Barrio Nuevo, uh, Oyo Soto. We, nobody liked us. But they instilled that in us. White fans don't have no friends, the older guys. So when anybody came down the neighborhood, they were in trouble. If they didn't have a good car, they couldn't go up those hills. We used to make cocktails and throw them on the cars, you know, out from the roofs. But, or jump on them and rat pack them. Then before you know it, they told us, why are you doing this? You're ruining our business. We're only doing what you told us. We didn't have no friends. We fought with everybody. He says, you're ruining our business because then the heroin came in. They used to come to score heroin. And uh, I could have went a different way. I could have been a professional baseball player, a professional boxer, the Lord bless me with athletic ability. But uh, I didn't. I thought I was making more money being a salesman selling heroin. So uh, before I knew it, I got arrested. Uh, again and again, and, and you know, I ended up with a driving under the influence of heroin. And I went to uh, San Quentin, and and uh, I was there part of the 60s. I, driving under the influence carried six to five, six months to five years. I'd done four on it. But I got out. In that time, I be, became a member, shot caller in the Mexican Mafia. and telling what people what to do and how to do it, and when to do it. I'm not proud of it like I told you, but now I'm proud to be a Christian, you know? It takes a very strong individual to be a Christian, woman or man. Any fool could act a fool, shoot somebody. It don't take no heart to do that. It takes big time heart to carry the Bible. I used to condemn people and force them for carrying Bibles. Now I carry a Bible. The MF was birthed in the guiding center, the thought. It was, and uh, the guy told me, what do you think? And get the best 
of each neighborhood that's busted. I told him, go for it. I said, you've been reading too many uh, mafia books, you know, and you ran it down. I says, yeah, you're, you're going to Tracy, go on and take it. I'm going to San Quentin. But sure enough, there they come in 62 to San Quentin, 63, and they got blew up in 63. So what, the idea was, was birth in? In Chino Guiding Center, yeah. The guy, he's deceased now, it was his thing. And all this other stuff, Joe Mark, he was no godfather. But anyway, he was a good brother. Coco Liso. Yeah, he was just a good brother, and he had connections, so they, but in the 70s, they made him a brother. What, 60s, late 60s in Folsom. I think it was 68, 69? Yeah, somewhere around there, yeah. When everybody went to Folsom. Guys say, oh, you're, oh, you're not an Emmy, you're a dropout. No, I didn't drop out of Emmy. I dropped into the King of Kings, Lord of Lords. I dropped into something better. Like you drop, you're the dropped out. You dropped out of your neighborhood to be a, an Emmy. Here you are calling guys dropout. You're the dropout. How come you ain't claiming your neighborhood no more? They're in a joint for killing somebody from another block. A piece of concrete didn't even belong to them. They claimed their neighborhood. It was there before they were born. It's going to be there when they die. And they get a murder before that piece of concrete. It belongs to the city. Really, it belongs to the cops. They're the ones that patrol it. And they kill the... Who do they hang around when, when they get to the joint, who do they got to protect? The guys from where they killed because it's north, south. When I was four years old, I stole my father's car. It was on a hill. I couldn't even reach the pet pedals. I was in the seat. Let the brake go down and I raked into the corner house. And uh, I, you know, it was more than just stealing cookies from the cookie jar. I started a, a, a path of crime real early, you know, and uh, when I used to get in fights with my cousins, my grandmother used to tie me up with rope and put me in the garage. But I used to escape. So she used chains. I couldn't get out of the chains. And every time I think about it, I remember I read something in the, the Bible about Legion. He was demon possessed. And he was tied up in chains. And, uh, I always think about that, and uh, I'm not possessed or oppressed. You know, I'm a Christian. You can't be oppressed or possessed if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I said, what street are we on? They said, Florence. The Florence don't look like this. Why do I look so ugly out here? So nasty. You know, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was in them seven and a half years I was gone, the world had really changed. My big homie Moreno was killed in front of my house. He lived down the street from me. I knew him most of my life. You know, you know, a lot of my friends are fucking doped out and, and not doing cool. <laughs> <laughs>